Hello students, in this video we will discuss some properties of congruences. So we shall start with the definition of congruences and then we shall move to the further properties of congruences. So let's start. The concept of uh, congruences was first introduced by K.F. Gauss. He was a German mathematician during 9, 1777 to 1855. He gave this idea of uh, congruences. So for, for any integer A, whether it is positive or negative, by using division algorithm, division algorithm we can write a equals to q times of n plus r where r is greater than or equals to 0 and strictly less than n then a minus r equals to q times of n so what we see here that that is n divides a minus r or equivalently we can say equivalently we can say that when a divided by divided by, by n leaves a remainder R. So this thing Gauss wrote like this A is congruent to R modulo N. He read at A is congruent to to R modulo n. This is what he read. This uh, uh, sign is uh, equivalent to just equal sign. So that's why uh, Gauss used this notation. This is equal sign but in some other sense. So uh, of course r is an integer because when we divide a by n so we shall be getting some integer remainder so r can take value between 0 and n so r can take value 0 1 2 and up to n minus 1 so any integer when divided by any integer a when divided by n leaves a remainder r and r can take value 0 1 2 3 and up to n minus 1 when we say the remainder we shall be in the positive remainder in fact when we include 0 we say non negative remainder so any integer a is congruent to any of this r modulo n. So let us define let n be a fixed positive integer the two integers A and B are said to be congruent modulo N if N divides A minus B 
and we write A is congruent to B modulo N. What we read it is N divides the difference of A minus B. So one thing is clear if A divides N minus B then certainly N will also divide B minus A. So what property here we see that is a note we can write if A congruent to B modulo N this will imply that or if and only if B is congruent to A modulo N both are equivalent. So let us uh, see some example. For example, if you have 3 and 24, so 3 congruent 24 modulo 7 because 7 divides 3 minus 24 that is 7 divides 3 minus 24 that is negative 21 of course 3, 7 divides negative 21. Similarly, other examples minus 31 is congruent to 11 modulo 7 because uh, 7 divides minus 31 minus 11 that is 7 divides minus this is 2 and this is 4 that is 42 here. Similarly, uh, we can write minus 15 is congruent to minus 64 modulo 7 because minus 15 minus 64 that is plus 64 uh, 7 divides these two sum of this difference of these two we can uh, we can clearly see that so other uh, what we see here what we observe here that is note any two integers any two integers any two integers suppose a or b are always congruent modulo 1 so it is very clear that the different let us take a any integer b any integer then of course one will divide their difference so second second property two integers are congruent modulo 2 when both are even or both odd that is very clear because uh, uh, when suppose a and b are even so a equals to something 2m and b equals to 2n so both are even so their difference will be even number either they are if m and n equals to 0 then it will be 0 itself so there is no doubt about that but in that case a minus b other cases 2 into m minus n and of course uh, 2 divides this one and 2 divides a minus b. Similarly, if both are odd, then their difference will be an even number. So, these two properties are very basic properties and we can uh, draw conclusion directly. So, uh, some other things like the, if n divides a minus b, that is equivalently just we have seen that a is congruent to b modulo n. It means that a divides a minus b. It means there exists, this implies there exists an integer k such that a minus b equals to some k times of n. a minus b equals to some k times of n. 
so this is a conclusion he usually used to write and another note if n doesn't divides a minus b then we say we say that a is incongruent incongruent modulo n a is incongruent uh, to b modulo n so in that case uh, we use notation uh, that is a is not congruent to b modulo n so now let us uh, discuss some uh, properties of course, we have seen just uh, uh, one one thing that if A is congruent to B, what low N. So, this will imply that B is also congruent to A, what low N. Of course, the thing is very clear from here. So, uh, some other uh, uh, properties what we are going to discuss because they are very useful when we, when we, uh, discuss the group theory and uh, some examples particularly just uh, if we discuss Zn or Zn is star or uh, Un and other so many groups so we need uh, this uh, congruence kind of concept over there so let us uh, see some properties properties let here we are taking n is greater than 1 be a fixed integer and a b c d are arbitrary integers then Some properties uh, I am writing A. A is congruent to itself. A modulo N. Second, A is congruent to B modulo N. And this implies that B is congruent to A modulo N. And conversely, C. If A is congruent to B, modulo n and b is congruent to c modulo n so this would imply that a is congruent to c modulo n this is called transitivity in the in, in later videos i will discuss uh, uh, equivalence class defined by congruence relation so, let us write uh, some more properties a congruent to b modulo n and c congruent to d modulo n so here uh, we have seen the uh, properties uh, property like uh, uh, transitive property here we are taking a congruent to b modulo n and c congruent to d modulo n then this uh, would imply that they are very important side by side if you can sum a plus c is congruent to b plus d modulo n and a c side by side we can multiply also a c is congruent to b to c modulo n and these are very important because uh, what we see here if uh, a minus b that is a divided by n leaves remainder b and uh, c when divide n when we divide c by n it leaves remainder d so when we multi when we divide a into c by n then this will leave the remainder of the product of these two uh, different remainders b and d so uh, similarly when we sum we shall get uh, the sum of remainder here when we divide sum of these two so 
other ex uh, other uh, property like the uh, e so a is congruent to b modulo n A is congruent to B modulo N. A is congruent to B modulo N. This implies that A plus C, we can see, uh, we can add some arbitrary integer. A plus C is congruent to uh, B plus B plus C modulo N. So, of course, uh, we, ha we have some these two. This is some, which is not B plus C modulo N. This is B plus C and modulo N. So let us see some other property. F A congruent to B modulo N. And this implies that A to the power K congruent to B to the power K modulo N. And for any positive integer k. So the, they are basic properties and their proof is not uh, so much difficult. For e Let us talk about the proof of this one. So because a is congruent to b modulo n, so this implies that there exists some integer k such that a minus b equals to k times of n. That is, we can write a equals to b plus k times of n. So, of course, uh, for this one, uh, for uh, if we take m equals to 1, the result is true. Because it is already given here. So, assume let uh, the result is true for m equals to k. So, in this case, what uh, we can write a to the power k equals to a congruence to b to the power k and modulo m. So, but also we have a to a is congruent to b a is congruent to b modulo n so just we have seen uh, in the this result uh, here here we have seen we can take the product directly side by side so let us take the product of these two side by side so this would imply that a to the power k plus 1 is congruent to b to the power k plus 1 and modulo n so this proves the, the result uh, f part. Other part are easy. If you wish, uh, I can give the proof in later videos. So for the today, I will finish here, and in the next video, uh, I will be discussing some more topics related to the theory. Thank you very much.